Talk She. Recorded live. Hello, everyone. This is Terry Lynn. Welcome to the University of Acadia Talk Show call today, being the 20th day of April 2011. We have uh, Franco Collins with us from Australia. We have some great topics to cover tonight, um, and hopefully it will help everyone. And just as a reminder, uh, remember that there is no legal advice. This is all for education um, and uh, your educational purposes and for helping each other. And uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Frank, and he's going to get us going here. Okay, thanks, Terry. Welcome, everybody, who's coming on to the call tonight, and welcome those that will be downloading the call either via TalkShoe or University of Acadia at uh, university.ucadia.info. Um, firstly, before I start, just my apologies. If you hear me cough or splutter, uh, I rarely get unwell, and, and tonight I find myself with a bit of the, the flu coming on, so um, please bear with me. Uh, I'll try not to sneeze and I'll certainly try not to sniffle. As, as Terry mentioned, I think there's a really important topic that I want to raise as the theme tonight in the, in the first hour before we take questions. And it really is a matter of just how much knowledge and what is the mind of the judges and magistrates, the prosecutors and the attorneys when you are facing legal and court matters. I still want to focus on the court, and I know there are many other issues. There's the issue, of course, of finance, and there's the issue of the communities, and there's also the issue of, of, of quite a number of things of Acadia. But I want to focus on the court again because this is and, and remains probably the, the centrepiece uh, and central issue that many folks still face, whether it be a foreclosure, uh, arrest, possible jail, seizure of assets, um, taking of children. I mean, the list goes on. So I want to focus on specifically what we know about the mind of the judges and the magistrates, the prosecutors and the uh, clerks and the attorneys at this point. Because it, it has been a learning process it has been a, a dissecting process to try and get down to the question of either A, are we dealing with what seems to be a pervasion of, of, of lies, or is there something even more frightening now, and that is that the courts have become so dumbed down that we're really dealing with literally idiots running the asylum. So I want to cover that. But before I do that, I, I want to cover a few subjects that lead into that. And that includes the understanding of the concept of persons, which I know for many people over many years has been seen as a central part of the enemy's infrastructure. What I'm referring to, of course, when I say person, is frequently called the straw man. So I want to talk about that because under Eucadia, of course, we have a divine personality we have a true personality and we have a superior personality. So I want, to, I want to cover that. I also want to talk a bit more about baptism because I know that some of the topics that was raised last week, particularly about the meaning of baptism and how it is an absolute abomination, would have caused a number of, of uh, potential ruffled feathers amongst people and again concern about why, if, is, if this is true, is this the first time you're hearing about it. So I want to come back to baptism I'm actually going to talk specifically about some of the words that are in their rules that give proof to what I was saying. I also want to cover, um, apart from baptism, I want to talk about the public and private. I want to talk about public and private because, again, when we're talking about court and talking about documents and we're talking about whether people are talking about accepted for value or setting off, this area of public and private has been, I think, one of the most mysterious areas that has never really, I feel, been truly expressed clearly. Certainly not if one listens and, and, and reads blacks. So that in mind, and, and thank you for your patience if I sound a bit uh, frog in the throat tonight, but let's get started then. One thing I'd like to start with, and I want to pass on my thanks to Matt, who provided this, is just 
an overview of getting a handle on the structure and the thinking of their system. So what I'd like those that are on the call now and those that listen later to do, if you do, if you do this, it would be wonderful, is just get a, get a sheet of paper, get a pen, and create four columns, four columns about 10, 10 rows deep. And I'm going to read something out to you, and I'm, I want to share this with you. And I think this is a wonderful encapsulation to show the kind of thinking, the kind of planning that they put in place when they think about their system. So grab a piece of paper, create four columns, and I'm just going to read out left to right, row by row, some wonderful insights that Matt shared uh, with us the other day. So let's start with the top. In the first row, in each column, put the word Father, then the word Son, and then the word Holy Spirit. The Trinity, the, the essential uh, concept of three in their system, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Then underneath that, put in the following words, mind, body, soul. So the Father being the mind, the Son being the body, the Spirit being the soul. This is, again, starting to see uh, the, the layers of their system. Then in the next row, underneath mind, body, soul, put in father, child, mother. So underneath mind is father, underneath body is child, underneath soul is mother. Then in the next row, put in the three words, under father, put real, under child, put personal, and under mother, put ecclesiastical. And in the fourth column now, put the word property. So let's just do a recap of what we've done, and, I, and we'll move on. But I want this to be shared as to you as a way of thinking about how they think, because tonight's call is all about how they think. And at the moment, this thinking is about the architects of the system and how they thought. The Venetians, the Khazars, the Jesuits, those that created the world that we currently live in. So just a summary, the first row we said Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The second row we said Mind, Body, Soul. The third row we said Father, Child, Mother. And the fourth row that we got to was Real, Personal, Ecclesiastical, and then on the right-hand side, Property. They're the three types of property. Now underneath that, now add under Real, put Law. Under Personal, put Military. And under Ecclesiastical, put Commerce. And then on the right-hand side, use the word role. Now underneath that, under law, military, commerce, and role, under law, put education. Under military, put security. Under commerce, put health. And on the right-hand side, put service. I've only got four to go, I promise you. Then on the, the next row, under education, put territory. Under security, put personal. And under health, put subject matter. And then on the right-hand side, put the word jurisdiction. Then underneath that row, underneath territory, put the word Vatican. Under the word personal, put Washington. And under subject matter, put London. And on the right-hand side, put HQ. Two to go. On the row underneath now, under Vatican, put the word magisterium. Under the word Washington, put the word officium. Under the word London, put imperium, imperium, and put the word authority to the right-hand side. And the last row, under magisterium, put the word crown. Under the word officium, put the word staff. And under aperium, put the word rod. And on the right-hand side, symbols of authority. So what I hope this shows, there are two models, there's two ideas that run right throughout this system. The concept of threes and the concept of two. Duality and trinity. It's everywhere. Public and private. Duality. We'll talk about that in a moment. But here in the model of trinity we see layer after layer after layer of their ideology, their philosophy, their theology, their administration, that they think in terms of threes and things are connected in terms of threes. There are three Sesta KV trusts that are created against you at your birth. Sesta KVs are also known as Fides Commissari and are also known as Foreign Citus. They exist and yet they're hidden trusts. They've been known in the system. There are acts of law 
and those CESA KV trusts were folded into the creation of the Health Acts and the Vital Statistic Acts in the 19th century. It is real. They exist and are used to control you. But here we start to see in our minds, hopefully, the thinking of the way they think in their system. So that's a high level. Now let's talk about persons and about this idea that a person can be created, an idea, an image can be created and can be assigned to us. Now the reason I want to talk about persons is if we are going to truly understand at the coalface how people think, then person is a vital one. And I'll tell you why it is a vital one. Most people on the call, I hope, have the understanding, have the realisation that a person is a fiction, is a form. It is not your flesh. It is not you. It is merely a form that is assigned to you, which you may go surety for. And if we go to the site one-heaven.org, one-heaven.org, and you go to the home page, and at the home page, if you click on the canons of positive law or positive law, and then you click on Article 17, you'll see what we mean by the word person. And we define person as any valid form attributed to a single member of the Homo sapiens species or equivalent higher order life form, living or deceased, or to the singular identity of a lawful aggregate of species. So a single member form of person is called a person, while a valid aggregate of persons is called a juridic person. But the key word there is it's a form attributed to. It is not the flesh. Now, why is this relevant? It's relevant because as of today, as of now, when you walk in or are brought in to a court, the chances are that 99% of the judges or magistrates, the prosecutors or the clerks, the attorneys will believe, absolutely believe, that you are the person. Literally, you are the person. Their intellectual ability has become so depleted that you are unlikely to ever find a judge now or a lawyer or anyone in their system that has the intellectual ability to distinguish that a person is a form. Even if you hold up a driver's license and say, am I this? You are really talking to a brick wall. You are dealing sadly, and we are dealing sadly with what in their system is, is officially, legally called idiots. The idiots are running their system. The incompetents are running their system. And if you've ever had an argument with an idiot, you know that it is literally wasting your breath. They truly believe that you are the person. And that is how they've been trained now. Dumbed down. So let's get into what we mean by person. And you'll see in a moment why this is relevant. Well... If that definition of person is, is, uh, is accurate, how many persons does a Eukadia member possess? And in fact, let's ask a question before that. How many persons does the Queen of England possess? Well, if you think about the Queen of England, she is a sovereign. She is also regarded as the head of the uh, church. She is also uh, regarded as the Metropolitan and she is also regarded as the Lord High Steward under private capacity. She is also regarded as a protector and a guardian. And there are a number of different titles and a number of different roles that the monarch of England uh, handles. Each of those are recorded. Each of those have a specific name, specific title, and therefore each of those can be regarded as a different person or personality. So when the Queen says we, she isn't merely referring to mind, body, spirit being united, but she is referring to the 